Hey guys, what's up? JWisp here, and welcome to episode 5 of the Minecraft 1.16 Nether Update Hardcore Survival Let's Play. Here we are, back in our world, having an amazing start to this series. I gotta say, the first few episodes have been extremely lucky, and I don't even know how we're getting such great luck. But in the last episode, we went over to this mesa biome over there, and there's a ruined portal in the distance. We completed that ruined portal, we headed to the nether, and we successfully raided a piglin bastion, as well as a few other things. But besides that, we are getting seriously stacked. We already have enchanted diamond armor, diamond tools, diamond weapons. It's not enchanted to a very high degree, but it's still pretty good. But what I've done in my spare time is I want to try to work towards getting my armor a little bit better. And to do that, I want to get some mending books. And so what I've been doing is I spent some time smelting some sand to get some glass. And what I want to do today is to get working on a villager breeder. Now I'm going to need to collect a little bit more wood here. Uh, and actually I need to make myself some shears to shear some sheep in a new sheep farm. But pretty much I will show you guys how to make a villager breeder because I want to make one to start off this episode. Now the reason I want a villager breeder is because first I want to get a few villagers that I can trade either paper or wheat for emeralds so that I can get tons of emeralds. And then I want to get a separate villager that I can trade just for mending books. That way I can get mending on all my armor, all my tools, all my weapons, and I don't really have to worry about repairing them ever again. So I think <laughs> that'll definitely be very nice to have. Now what's nice about villager breeders is you only need a few basic things. You need an enclosed area, you need some beds, some villagers, and a farm. And that's about it. And as long as you have a farm and some beds in a small area, you can have as many villagers as you have beds in your villager breeder and it'll pretty much work it sounds crazy but that's pretty much how minecraft mechanics work now i'm gonna take care of these guys really fast shear them i might come back and breed them to get some more sheep but this is a good start this will get us a few beds to start out with let's just try to get out of here really fast without them getting out ah there we go but we'll get started on the villager breeder they're super easy to make i just got a lot of glass for it because i like making my villager breeders out of glass just so i can look inside and see what's happening now making them out of glass is not the prettiest thing because just a big glass box doesn't always look super nice but you know it still serves a functional purpose and you know it'll get the job done all right so i've gathered some of my uh, materials i have some farming supplies for the farm now with a villager breeder you actually don't need to make it in an enclosed space. I just do that so I have control of my villagers and I can let them in and out of my village as I want to. But what you can actually do is if you have a village already or a lot of villagers nearby, you can simply place some more beds in their houses and make a few more farms and they'll naturally start to breed. Now these mechanics are also how people make iron golem farms which is why I have so many iron golems around here. I don't know why I have so many. I have three or four in this village. It's kind of crazy. But like I was saying before, I prefer to have it in an enclosed system. So I'm just going to make myself a, just a rectangle out of glass. It can really be any size. It doesn't matter. All right. So here we go. We have our big glass rectangle. I know. I know. Pretty impressive, right? But after this, a villager breeder gets pretty easy. Let's just take some of our beds. I don't have too many right now. So I'll have to definitely get some more, but just start placing them in the back corner or row of your villager breeder. And then usually it doesn't matter where, but I just do it on the other side. I'll start my farm. Now I have a little bit of dirt, so I'll just hollow out this area to start my farm. And after this, all you have to do is pretty much get villagers in your villager breeder. Now that can be pretty tricky for some people. If you're on a server or have access to villager spawn eggs, obviously I would try that and makes things a lot easier. But if you're in survival, you have a few options. You can either use a minecart railway to uh, transport villagers into your village. If you place a minecart on top of a villager, it'll go in. Or you can simply make a boat, which is probably the method I'll use. And all you really need to do is place a boat on top of a villager and ride it on land to your villager breeder. Thankfully, boats actually don't move too slow while on land, so it should be pretty easy. But let's just finish this farm really fast. As for the village farm, it's actually fairly easy. You can put any crops you want. It doesn't matter. You can even put different crops which i'll probably do all i did was destroy the you know pre-existing 
farms in the village and I'm just gonna take their seeds and plant them myself and then also what I like to do is to grab some composters just so I have some villagers that will automatically make food and give food to the villagers to also promote their breeding so let's just place some of these down oh I actually can't do the beetroot seeds let's just do wheat seeds but uh yeah it's pretty simple now some people will say that like oh you can't use wheat because the villagers need to make bread but uh, I'll still see villagers breed even if I give them wheat. Some people suggest using carrots or potatoes. That works fine. But uh, after this, your villager breeder is pretty much done. You don't need a big farm at all. You know, it can be pretty small. It really doesn't matter that much. I'll just place my composters. And you can have as many villagers as you have beds. Now I could still, you know, I only have four beds. I could still bring like eight villagers inside of here and trap them inside. But they wouldn't breed any more villagers. You only need two villagers. And if you have four beds, they'll breed enough to make four villagers. If you have 20 beds, they'll make 20. Now obviously, there is somewhat of a limit because you can't just make an extraordinarily giant villager breeder and expect it to work obviously that'll run into some issues but there are some different methods you can use to transport villagers and get a lot more so let's try to get some villagers inside of our villager breeder now and there we go that's pretty much all we need we only need two villagers i could put more in there but i have four beds and i don't want to take too many villagers away from my village not that it really matters because i already have so many but there we go what will happen is the crops will start to grow and the villagers will harvest them they'll eventually start to share the food a bit and after they share the food with each other you'll see some hearts and they'll pretty much just start to you know have s some fun and uh make some babies now i have four beds so if i come back you know in like an hour or so i can expect to have four villagers but i'll definitely work on trying to get more beds once those sheep regain their wool i'll probably harvest it again make some more beds come back here and eventually fill up a few rows of beds now what you also want to make sure is when you're placing the beds that the villagers have access to each bed so don't place beds in this entire back row and then place beds in the entire row right you know directly in front of it because then they can't access the beds in the back make sure that all villagers have access to all beds just so they can sleep when they need to and that'll work but there you go that's a villager breeder it's pretty simple you can make it a lot bigger you can make it a lot smaller i make these in all my worlds and it's really nice to have you know it, i just i don't know it's good to have you know you can control what trades your villagers have and also just in case something happens to your village whether it's a raid or you have a bad night with mobs and a lot of villagers die you at least have a backup and you can get more villagers to restock your village and it's also nice if you make decorative villages like you could take villagers hundreds of blocks away from their village and start a villager breeder breed some villagers and make your own man-made village you know it doesn't have to be naturally spawning so lots of cool things you can do with villager breeders all right so it's been a bit here i am in the nether and actually between last episode and this episode i did a bit of exploring in the nether and i found this nether fortress so i wanted to raid it in this episode looks like we got some piglins fighting over there and uh check it out now we don't have to worry too much about piglins but we do have hoglins to worry about let's see how strong these boys are i want to hopefully raid this with uh without dying that would be the goal Let's see if I can uh, actually attack this boy. I have to be very careful. Because sometimes hoglins can do a lot of damage, as you can see. That was only one hit. Will the baby hoglins attack me too? Oh, they will. Okay. They don't do much damage, though. Look, I don't want to hurt you, buddy. Yeah, just run away. It's okay. I feel bad. But here we have a fortress. Hopefully, we can get some pretty good stuff. Either some good loot, uh, maybe some potion brewing materials. Because we still need to get that. We haven't gotten any of that stuff yet. Because we're going to definitely need potions before we head to the end i especially like potions for the next few times i come to the nether i want to be careful but at least i have my golden apples here we also i guess should collect some blaze rods so once we get ender pearls we can make eyes of ender now i only have like one or two ender pearls if that i don't even remember i don't have a lot at all but 
hopefully we can head into the soul sand valley it's right near my portal and usually in soul sand valleys in the nether there can be tons of endermen that spawn one thing that's actually kind of interesting that i noticed about the new nether is that it looks a lot better with fog turned on i think it looks really nice now optifine turns off fog if i could ideally you know have my settings as they were i would hope that optifine adds a setting where you can adjust just fog in the nether because i would like to leave fog in the nether on while having fog in the overworld turned off fog in the overworld is just that white fog you see in the distance i think it looks kind of bad i'm not a fan of it but fog in the nether i think this stuff looks pretty cool let's head to this blaze spawn oh Okay, you know what I'm actually going to do? People are going to yell at me. I'm going to break one spawner intentionally, just because I don't want too many blazes spawning. And then the other one I'll use for actually killing the blazes. I don't think I'll really make a blaze farm or anything like that. I don't think we'll have to do that, but hopefully we can get some to spawn. Let's see. Anytime now. It is hardcore Minecraft. Hello? Uh, our blaze spawner is not working in 1.16. Because I would expect... It's not like it's too light for them or anything. I don't think, think you can even light up blaze spawners. I think even if you place torches all around them, they still spawn. Huh, this one didn't seem to be working either, though. Usually when I walk up to the spawner, I would expect blazes to come. Oh, there we go. Okay. I wonder why it was so slow. Like, spawn rates are usually a little higher depending on the difficulty. And considering I'm on hardcore, I would assume that the spawn rates would be pretty high for the spawner. So... Not sure what that was about, but I'll just kill a few of these guys, get some blaze powder, and we should be all set. Alright, well, I got myself a few blaze powder. It was weird because no blazes would spawn, and then at one time, I literally had three blazes spawn, and then three more spawned. And I was fighting six blazes at once, so I went through a few golden apples, but it's fine. We have 14 blaze powder, which is, uh, you know, it's definitely a decent amount. It's not like a ton, but it might do us... All right, I don't think I'll really need much more than that. We'll have to see. Let's see if I can take out these boys and get any Wither Skulls. Now, Wither Effect, oh, I was really hoping I could avoid it. it does a lot of damage. Ooh, the little Heart Effect, though, is different. My hearts look a little different with Wither Effect. Let's see. I also forgot that I could turn my graphics to a Fabulous, so I did that. Again, like I was saying before with Fabulous graphics, not really any noticeable change. It's only with a few blocks and lighting effects, but... I don't know, it's alright. I actually think I get slightly higher FPS using fabulous graphics. Ooh, a diamond, okay. I don't know if it just has to do with, you know, how the graphics are rendered with my CPU. Maybe it puts less load on my CPU, or maybe more on my graphics card and less on my CPU. I'm not sure, it's kind of weird, but... Ooh, let's see what we can get. Nether wart, okay, we have now potion brewing stuff. Uh, let's not head down there. Let's grab a few of the chests here, see if we can get some more good loot. Ooh, diamonds and nether wart, perfect. That's all I really need, as long as I get really one piece of nether wart, which I already have. We should be pretty much all set. But let's see, any more chests? I'd like to get maybe some horse armor. I know you can get that in these chests. Horse armor would be nice, just because I want a horse. I think I have a saddle and a name tag, so maybe I'll try to do that by the end of the episode, because I'd like to definitely get myself a little horse, friend. But seems like we've really raided most of this. I'm not sure if we really missed much else. Let's try to head to the top of the fortress and see if we can find different pathways. So there's part of the fortress over there. Let's maybe head over there and check it out a little bit. I have to be really careful. I fall If I fall in the lava, this could be the end of me. I'm just a little overly confident, though, because I do have golden apples, so I could still potentially live if I fell in. I think I'll be okay, though. I'm pretty... I'm pretty skilled in the ways of minecraft let's see oh we have another wither skeleton i want to kill them i know they do a lot of damage and i probably should avoid them in hardcore but i want to fight them just because i do want to get some wither skulls because i do want to eventually fight the wither i think that's definitely an achievement i need to get on hardcore i think i've beat the wither once before on hardcore minecraft i'm not entirely sure though and since i'm not sure it means i just have to do it again to make sure but let's check out the rest of this fortress. I doubt there's really much else. We already found a few blaze spawners and whatnot. I think it might be actually cool to maybe make a base, like a nether base out of a nether fortress or a piglin bastion. I've done it with a piglin bastion before on my main survival let's play. But uh, I don't know, maybe just play around with different building designs. See what's up. Those are the blaze spawners from before. Hmm. Let's see. I think we did pretty much explore most of this. I think 
Have I gone up here before or no? Oh yeah, up there was just a little room with not much that took us over there. Let's go this direction then. There should still be maybe a little bit we haven't explored. I would like to find, I mean, even though I already have a little bit of nether wart and some soul sand, I'd like to find one of those actual tiny nether wart farms just to get a little bit more nether wart. I think it'll be nice to have. Ooh, okay, let's take care of these guys. I have to watch my hearts. Magma cube, get out of here. Oh, hardcore skills. I'm low, okay. I started to get low on hearts whenever I'm like half hearts or below in hardcore I get scared but I, th I think we'll be okay I think I need to learn to just be a little safer and allow myself to constantly be at full hearts I'm always too aggressive like you see there but I'm gonna check around see if I find anything else and report back to you guys <laughs> There we go, got rid of that cast. I didn't really find much else, so there wasn't really anything else to explore in the nether. But, uh, oh damn, I didn't get the achievement. We'll have to get that achievement another time. But, yeah, couldn't really find much. At least, though, we do have some soul sand and soul soil. And we have some nether wart. So now we can really get started on making some brewing stands and starting to make some potions, which is definitely good news for us. Because potions are one of the things that are going to keep me alive in hardcore, especially in the end. In the overworld, I don't really have to worry too much about it. But in the end, when fighting the dragon, I definitely want slow falling potions. And maybe a few other potions would be nice just to keep on me in random times. Like maybe when I'm in the nether, keeping... A fire resistance potion on me or just getting armor with a lot of fire protection but I think I want to focus my armor more on normal protection unbreaking mending and also I get a few pieces with blast protection because I, th I think if I have one or two pieces with blast protection for it'll make it so that a creeper won't instantly kill me if it blows up on top of me because that's how it, I've died in three out of the four of my hardcore worlds I've had on the channel it's all due to creeper explosions one world was literally just due to a file corrupting so <laughs> it is a uh, creepers three or four J wisp is zero and I think if I can secure some blast protection on my armor, I should be pretty safe from the creepers. Oh, hey, and look, walking past the villager breeder, it looks like it is uh, started to work. We have a little baby sand villager, and we have two adult villagers right there. So hopefully, in a little bit, they'll eventually breed to make another villager, and hopefully, I can get some more beds soon. I'll probably work on the villager breeder off camera between episodes. Just make it a little better. That way we can have a big supply of villagers and maybe even get mending in the next episode. What might be nice is if we can get a few more diamonds, make a new set of diamond armor or maybe some diamond tools, we can hopefully do some level 30 enchantments if I can find a good way to get XP. And uh, I think it'll be pretty cool, but let's head in here. Let's, oh. Well, all right, let's kind of go over stuff though. We didn't get really too much loot from the nether, but we did get a few diamonds, which I'm cool with, and we do have some soul sand. So what I'm gonna do is just, I only have four pieces of soul sand. Why are all these villagers in my village? They're taking my beds now. All right, let's just get out from the roof. Uh, let's just turn one of these houses into a nether wart farm, I guess. I mean, I only really need four blocks of space, so I'll just do it in here. Eventually I will go grab more soul sand. I don't know why I didn't. I'm not going to need too much nether wart now. I don't really need to focus too much on potions yet, but uh, there we go. We have some potions. Oh, I also should have kept one blaze rod to make a... Oh, I should have done that to make a brewing stand because you need a blaze rod. Dang. Do I have a blaze rod? What are they doing up there? Do you hear this? Get out of my house. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, no, looks like I just have blaze powder, but I can always get a blaze rod before the next episode. And also, let me see, because I thought I do have name tags. Do I have a saddle? I don't remember if I've got... Oh, yeah, I do have a saddle. So, you know what? Before this episode ends, I have a name tag. I have a saddle. I actually don't have an anvil yet, so I can't even use the name tag. It doesn't look like I have enough iron. But let's at least use my saddle, and let's try to get myself a horse. Ah, uh, so here we are on the one, <laughs> the one small little island biome near me where horses can spawn. Thankfully, I've been looking around and we have a decent amount of horses, but let's just try to, let's go through the horses. Let's try to get the first one we saw. I think this one looks all right, but I have a lot of, op ooh, okay, this horse has a lot of health, so de definitely a decent amount of health. Oh, oh, that was quick. Looks like this horse likes me. Let's check out this horse's speed. Hmm. Has a lot of health, but doesn't necessarily have a lot of speed. Hmm. 
You know what? It's still pretty good though. I'll take it. I so I can't use my name tag yet, but what I'll do is I'll grab some more iron in between episodes. If you guys have name suggestions for my horse, let me know. I'll really take name suggestions. So depending on what you want me to name my horse, just let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, guys, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed, definitely leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate the immense support on the series. It's been insane. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next one.